Hi everyone, thanks for checking out this video. Today we just got some new info dropped on the 2024 Dungeons and Dragons core book releases, and we got a new video here from the D&D team. Let's look at this video and break down some of the highlights that we have in here. So first of all, the messaging is... How is this going to be compatible with 5th edition? It is 5th edition. Yeah, these books are a continuation of the edition we've all been playing since 2014. Our end goal is that we will include in the 2024 rule books all the best elements of the 2014 rule books along with new material and also old material that has been refined throughout this process we started being very experimental we certainly saw that big swaths of changes big experimental changes looks like they might pull back on that with the next uh, iteration of the playtest that we might see Save the Monk, who will be coming very soon. So we got the Monk playtest coming very soon. We've been experimenting uh, with subclass progression. And we've talked before that one of our main goals is to make it so that you don't have to pick a subclass at first level. So keeping the no subclasses at first level, maybe also at second level. The normalization of the subclass progression, while interesting, and appealing to some people really is not lighting anyone's world uh, on fire in a positive way, well, then we're leaving it behind. And so you're actually going to see in the very next Unearthed Arcana, when we revisit the experts and the priests, their old subclass progressions are going to be back. So we're going to see the old subclass progressions back, except for levels one and two. Uh, the next playtest packet, they're going to revisit the experts and the priests. So Bard, Rogue, Ranger... Uh, priests would be cleric, druid, paladin. I have to confess, I kind of liked making all the subclass progressions the same, but then it does leave all the content that's already out there having to be kind of tweaked to fit. So suddenly, you will you're going to see us moving to a point where it's going to be easier and easier to even just point at and say, "Oh yeah, that's the thing that changed there." We should see fewer and fewer changes, you would think, uh, which I think is a good thing with the goal that they will be usable with the 5th edition adventures you have now. Uh, you'll be able to open up Curse of Strahd, Princes of the Apocalypse. That's a huge plus for, I think, Wizards of the Coast. So 5th edition continues to grow, so there is no reason for us to stop it. And especially now with how other companies are trying to jump in and take a lot of the customer base, Customers don't have to decide. Now they stay with the product that they've had for 10 years. That's probably a good business move on their part. Did they really start out thinking they were going to end this way and do, as they say, real experimental, you know, play test stuff at the start and then roll it back in? Or is this organic with what the feedback has been? Good. It's good if it, the, they're adjusting to what the feedback is. So that's a good sign, too. In the end, the books themselves will tell you how they work with the fifth edition books you already have. There's kind of this core advantage of, yeah, but you, you can do all this playtesting, but you've had 10 years of playtesting for fifth edition, so. Yeah, 10 years of playtesting, find out what wasn't working exactly right, sharpshooter, and fix it. Why abandon the game that you have so much history with? Just tweak it a little bit, fix the little things that are wrong, and move forward. The 2024 Player's Handbook, the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, why the sudden focus specifically on the year? Interesting. There's a little slip there. Why the, quote, sudden focus specifically on the year? So, yeah, that's what we're going to call it. 2024 D&D, 2024 Player's Handbook, 2024 Monster Man, 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide to differentiate it. So do you think this is a good idea? Should they, you know, be wholesaling, fixing everything in the system and resetting to zero or continuing on as they do. So I imagine there's a big influx of new book sales if they just reset. But then how many customers do they lose versus selling the, the 2024 Player's Handbook? Still a lot of people are going to buy it, even if it's not massively changed. What do you think about what they're doing with their strategy here? Me and other members of the content team knows that there is some capitalization changes in Unearth Arcana. The direction we're headed in is definitely more capitalization uh, because it helps signal to the reader 
when are they reading a proper noun, the name of something, versus just a general English word. When we say poisoned, for instance, we don't just mean poisoned in the English sense, we're actually giving you the name of a game object. Uh, more capitalization, not as much as we're in the first playtest packets, but anytime a rules element appears, capitalized. So there it is. There is the uh, information really focused on calling it the 2024 Player's Handbook, trying to really say it's a continuation of fifth edition. Uh, looks like they'll be pulling back in a lot of the very extensive uh, rules updates that they were playtesting. We will see because we're going to get the new priests and expert classes playtest coming out soon. They said the monk playtest was coming out soon. I noticed a little bit of change of branding too. If we go to the Dungeons and Dragons Beyond uh, website here and we look at the sources, I believe that used to say 1D&D. &D. And I think within the last day or two, that changed to Unearthed Arcana. And you don't see 1D&D &D here on this page. You see Unearthed Arcana. I noticed on their frequently asked questions, they haven't updated their branding yet. If you click here, it's still going to see 1D&D, &D, but that's part of a YouTube video, so they'd have to redo that video. So there you go. That's the information that just dropped. Um, what do you think of their plans? Do you think that it's a good idea to reduce the scope, make it more like the existing Dungeons & Dragons, or do you think they should go for wholesale change and really basically force everyone to start fresh with this new edition? Uh, let me know in the comments below, and thanks for checking out the video.